Hi everyone. Today we are dealing with a new session of complex numbers and quadratic equation which is power of i. Now the thing which you know as power of i is first we have started with what is root of minus 1 which was taken as i. That means you know that i square is equal to minus 1. Now we will see what will be i cube. i cube can be written as i square into i which is equal to again i square's value is minus 1 into i which will give you minus i. Now if I am taking i raised to 4 I can write it as i square the whole square which is minus 1 the whole square i square is minus 1 the whole square will give you 1. If it is i raised to 5 then you will get i, I raised to 3 into i raised to 2 and i raised to 2 can be written as minus 1. i raised to 3 you already got it to be minus i so that you can write minus i into minus 1 which is you are getting it to be i. i raised to 6 is i square the whole cube which is i square is minus 1 the whole cube which will give you negative 1. So exit i you can find out all the values. Now we are going for the negative powers. Okay. That is if I have i raised to minus 1. i raised to minus 1 is 1 by i which is equal to I am just removing this i from the denominator so that I am multiplying the numerator and denominator with i. So I will get in the numerator i. Denominator will become i square so that it is i by minus 1 or minus i. Now i raised to minus 2 means it is 1 by i square which is 1 by minus 1 which is minus 1. Now i raised to minus 3 is 1 by i cube which can be written as 1 by i square into i which is 1 by minus i. Again you can just multiply and divide the numerator and divide the denominator with i so that this will become i by minus of minus 1 which is i and i raised to minus 4 will give you 1 by i raised to 4 which is 1 by i square the whole square which is equal to 1 by minus 1 the whole square is equal to 1 by 1 equal to 1. So from these things similarly it will go like this. From these things we are just inferring the power of i in general. So in general what is happening we will see. Okay in general if I have the power of i to be a multiple of 4, to be a multiple of 4, what I am getting, just see, here it is 1, i raised to minus 4 means it is 4 into minus 1. So again I am getting 1, if it is i raised to 8 suppose, now if I am taking i raised to 8, which is again i raised to 2 the whole raised to 4, which is minus 1 raised to 4, again you will get 1. So in general I can say that if it is a multiple of 4 in the power of i, the value which I am getting is always 1. So, k is any integer positive or negative. If it is that power can be written as i raised to 4 into something, then the value will be 1. That is the meaning of this. Okay. Then you have i raised to, suppose it is 4k plus 1. If it is a multiple of 4 plus 1. Okay. Suppose I am substituting k as 0, the power of i will be 1. So i raised to 1 is i. Okay. Now if it is 1, the value of k is 1, then I will get 4 plus 1 in the power which is 5 and i raised to 5 is i. So if k is 0, I am getting i. If k is 1, I am getting i. You substitute for k equal to 2, then also you will get i. So in general, I can say that if the power of i is in the form, can be written in the form 4k plus 1, then the value of that i raised to that number will give you the value i. And if you have i raised to 4k plus 1 as the power or you can write the power as i raised to 4k plus 2, then you will have, you just check, if I am substituting k as 0, I will get i raised to 2 and the value of i raised to 2 is minus 1. Now uh, you just go for uh, k equal to 1, you will get power as 6 and i raised to 6 is also minus 1. So in general I, I can say that if I can write the power of i as 4k plus 2 then the value will be minus 1 and if it is 4k plus 3 the power is 4k plus 3 then the value will be minus i. 4k plus 3 means if it is i raised to 3 
That means when a is 0, I will get i raised to 3. And i raised to 3 is minus i. So in general, you can say that the value of the power of i which can be written as 4k plus 3 will give you the answer as minus i only. Okay? Next topic is the square roots of a negative real number. We know that i square is minus 1. Now what will be minus i the whole square? Which will be minus 1 the whole square into i square. So you will get this to be positive. Again it becomes i square so that your answer is minus 1 again. That means we can say that i and minus i are the square roots of square roots of minus 1. Okay, are the square roots of minus 1. But generally we use the simple root of minus 1 as i. Okay, that means we can say that i and minus i are the solutions of the quadratic equation x square plus 1 equal to 0. This is the thing where from where we started complex number. In order to find out the roots of this type of quadratic equation. So we have reached that concept that i and minus i are the solutions of the quadratic equation x square plus 1 or x square equal to minus 1. Okay, now we are just considering what will be root 3 i, the whole square. It will give you root 3 the whole square into i square which is 3 into minus 1 or minus 3. Now what about minus root 3 i the whole square which is again negative the whole square will give you positive. So again you are getting root 3 the whole square i square which is 3 into minus 1 or minus 3. Okay, so I can say that the square roots of minus 3 are root 3 i and minus root 3 i. But the general case is when we have the term like uh, root of minus 3, we will write it as root 3 into i. How? It is split and written as root 3 into minus 1 and root of minus 1 root 3 into root of minus 1 and root of minus 1 is i so that you will get root 3 i. Okay, this is the general notation but by talking about the square roots of root 3, sorry minus 3, you can say that they are root 3 i and minus root 3 i. So, in general what we can say, in general if you have any uh, positive If you have any positive real number, that is if A is any real number, positive real number, then root of minus A will be root A into I. Root of minus A will be root A into I. Okay. Now we know that root a into root b is equal to root of a b and this is true when both a and b are positive real numbers. Now let us check the condition when, so here it is clear, now when you have a as positive and b as negative, what will happen to your root of a into root of b and root of a b, okay. When uh, you are taking A as positive, suppose A is 2 and B is negative, so suppose B is minus 1. So you will get your root of A into root of B as root 2 into root of minus 1, right? Which you will write root 2 I. Okay, now according to this property, you will have root of AB, which is root of 2 into minus 1, which is again root of minus 2 and you will write it as root 2 I. Okay, now suppose you are taking A as negative value and B as a positive value. So what you will get, so I am just replacing it as A as minus 1 and B as 2. So that I can check this, root of minus 1 into root of 2 is equal to, again you will get root 2 i. And root of AB will give you minus 1 into 2 is equal to root 2 minus root 2 which is root 2 i again. Okay. 
Now, what happens when both A and B are negative? That is when A is less than 0 and B is less than 0. Suppose I am taking A as minus 1 and B as minus 2. So, what will happen to root A into root B? Root of minus 1 into root of minus 2. Root of minus 1 is I. Okay. And root of minus 2 is written as root 2 I. Right? So, you will have root 2 into I square which is what you will get? Negative root 2. Okay. Now, what will happen to root of AB? So, you get minus 1 into minus 2 inside the root which will give you minus into minus plus. So, this will become root 2. Here you have got minus root 2 and here you got root 2. So, you can say that if both A and B are negative, this condition does not hold good. Okay. Therefore, in general, we can say that root A into root B is not equal to root of AB if both A and B are negative real numbers. Okay. Now, suppose... Both A and B are zeros. Then what happened to root A into root B? It will satisfy root of AB also. So if A and B both are zeros, then root of A into root of B is same as root of AB. If both are positive, then also it is satisfied. If one of them is negative, then also the condition is satisfied. But if both are negative, the condition is not satisfied. Okay. Is we will deal with certain identities for complex numbers and these identities are very similar to the identities for real numbers. So, we will start with for two complex numbers Z1 and Z2 the first property is Z1 plus Z2 the whole square is equal to what is a plus b the whole square same property is following in your complex numbers also so you will have z1 square plus 2 z1 z2 plus z2 square okay that is your first property second one is z1 minus z2 the whole square is equal to a minus b the whole square so you will have z1 square minus 2 z1 z2 plus z2 square third one is z1 plus z2 the whole cube which is equal to again a plus b the whole cube formula which is z1 cube plus 3 z1 square z2 plus 3 z1 z2 square plus 3 sorry plus z2 cube okay and fourth one is z1 minus z2 the whole cube so again for minus you have alternate plus and minus here when you have the power of second term as 1 or odd power, there odd you have negative. So, you will have here as z1 cube minus 3 z1 square z2 because z2 is of ha having power 1 and this will become positive and the last term will be again negative. Okay. So, this is same as your properties in real numbers and the last one is z1 square minus z2 square which is a square minus b square similar to a square minus b square will give you z1 minus z2 into z1 plus z2 okay so these are the properties related to complex numbers next topic is the modulus and conjugate of a complex number for that we will just start with uh, the general form of a complex number which is a plus ip okay and we will explain what will be modulus and conjugate of that complex number. Let z equal to a plus ib be a complex number. Then the modulus of z, modulus of this complex number, modulus of z which is usually denoted by mod z. Okay, in between two lines you are just writing z. This is the notation used for denoting what is modulus of z okay and we will read it as mod z and this is equal to a non-negative real number which is root of 
the real part what is the real part of z a and what is the imaginary part b so we have root of the real part plus the root of real part square plus imaginary part square this is your modulus of z or mod z okay root of square root of a which is your real part it's square root of a square plus imaginary part square okay that is root of if you want to write real z the whole square plus imaginary part of z the whole square this is your modulus of z now what is conjugate of z for conjugate of z the notation is z bar okay and the meaning of conjugate is if you have z equal to a plus ib then whatever sign is for the imaginary part we will replace it with the opposite sign understood z is equal to a plus ib so its conjugate will be a minus ib okay we are just changing the sign of the imaginary part a minus ib only imaginary part and that will give you the conjugate of the complex number okay for example if you have suppose z is equal to or you are taking a complex number as 2 plus 3i so what will be mod of z or mod of 2 plus 3i which will be root of 2 square plus 3 square equal to 4 plus 9 equal to root 30 okay now in order to find out z bar for this this will be 2 plus 3i the whole bar which is you have to just change the sign of the imaginary part. So you will get 2 minus 3i as the conjugate of z. Now if you have another one, suppose z is 3 minus i. So your modulus of z will become mod of 3 minus i which is root of 3 square plus the imaginary part is minus 1. So you will have minus 1 the whole square which will give you root of 9 plus 1 which is root 10. And z bar is 3 minus i the whole bar which is same as again you have to change the sign of the imaginary part. This is the imaginary part minus 1. So that will become plus 1. So you will have 3 plus i. Okay that is the conjugate of 3 minus i. Now the multiplicative inverse multiplicative inverse of a non-zero complex number. Okay, what is the multiplicative inverse of the non-zero complex number z? So we are taking um, complex number is z means the multiplicative inverse is z inverse. Right? Z raised to minus 1. And what will be that? It is same as 1 by z. Z we have taken as a plus ib. So we will get 1 by a plus ib. And already we have studied what is 1 by a plus ib taking the conjugate multiplying and dividing with the conjugate of this that is a minus ib we will get a by a square plus b square plus i into minus b by a square plus b square. Now we are just combining these two so that this will give you a minus ib because the denominator is a square plus b square you can add the numerator so that you will get a minus ib and a minus ib is nothing but z bar okay so we are replacing it as z bar and what is the denominator it is the square of modulus value modulus value is root of a square plus b square so a square plus b square will be the square of this one that is we can replace this as mod z square so what we got 1 by z that is z, z raised to minus 1 which can be written as 1 by z is equal to z bar by mod z square. Now cross multiplying what you will get? You will get z z bar is equal to mod z square. z z bar is equal to mod z square which is an important result where you, wherever you have mod z square you can just split and write it as z into z bar. Or if you have z into z bar in some of the proofs of theorems, you can just use in certain problems, you can use this result as replacing z z bar with mod z square also. Okay. Have certain properties of modulus and conjugate. 
for that we are considering two complex numbers z1 and z2 so first property of modulus is if you have the product of the modulus that will be same as modulus of the product so this is the modulus of the product it will be same as product of the modulus that is mod of z1 z2 is equal to mod z1 into mod z2 the other property for modulus is if you have a fraction and you are taking the modulus of that fraction for z1 and z2 you can just separately take the modulus that means mod z1 by mod z2 both will have the same meaning mod of z1 by z2 is same as mod z1 by mod z2 but the condition is this mod z2 should not be equal to 0 because it is in the denominator mod z2 should not be equal to 0 so provided you should have this condition as mod z2 is not equal to 0 now next is your conjugate property okay and that property is if you have z1 z2 the whole bar z1 z2 the whole bar you will get it to be separately taking the conjugate and multiplying first the meaning of this is multiply both the complex numbers and then take the mod conjugate and the meaning of this is separately take the conjugate of the two complex numbers and then multiply so that will give you the same answer okay next fourth one is if you have the addition or subtraction of two complex numbers and you have to take the conjugate of them that is mod of sorry conjugate of z1 plus or minus z2 the whole conjugate will give you take separate conjugate and if you want to add add or then subtract that is z1 conjugate of z1 plus or minus z2 is same as conjugate of z1 plus or minus conjugate of z2 and the last property is is z1 by z2 the whole bar that is the whole conjugate is equal to z1 conjugate divided by z2 conjugate or you can read it as z1 bar divided by z2 bar provided the condition is z2 should not be equal to 0 why because if z2 is 0 z2 bar is also 0 so we need not talk about this if we are saying that z2 is not equal to 0 it is automatically following that z2 bar will also be not equal to 0 so these are the properties of modulus and conjugate clear